One of the most feared and notorious Nazis to have risen to power during Hitler's Third Reich was Reinhard Heydrich. Heydrich was deemed by Heinrich Himmler as the ideal Nazi and the perfect Aryan. In fact, Hitler even regarded Heydrich as a man with the Iron Heart, such was the brutality displayed by the man who was regarded as one of the architects of the Holocaust. Heydrich became the chief of the Reich Security Main Office, overseeing the Gestapo, SD and Kripo, and became the deputy protector of Bohemia and Moravia. When he arrived in Prague, he instilled a reign of terror in which he tried to eliminate all opposition to the Nazi occupation. The crimes of Heydrich were endless, however in May 1942 he was mortally wounded, following an assassination attempt by members of the Czech resistance, trained by British Special Operations Executive. The bomber machine gun attack did not kill Heydrich immediately, but on the 4th of June 1942 he passed away. He was given a colossal funeral, in which Hitler personally attended, along with other high-ranking Nazis. When he was buried it was alleged it was done in secret, however in December 2019, a newspaper story came out that stated that Heydrich's burial location and grave had been dug up, and that the grave had been disturbed. But what is the story behind this? Join us today as we look at the attempted grave robbing of Reinhard Heydrich. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Reinhard Heydrich joined the Nazi party on the 1st of June 1931, and six weeks later joined the SS. He managed to secure an interview with Heinrich Himmler, and at this the two discussed their plans for creating an SS intelligence service, but Himmler was so impressed that Heydrich was given the job straight away. Through clever manipulations and a close relationship with Himmler, Heydrich rose through many different positions and became the chief of the SD, the counterintelligence service that carried out missions with great intimidation and terror. He also became the chief of the Gestapo in April 1934 and was involved in the Night of the Long Knives and crushing the SA with the SS in the Purge. Heydrich continued with the SD to plot against the enemies of the Nazi state and along with the Gestapo had many people transported to concentration camps. Both he and Himmler shared the view that enemies of the Nazi state should be dealt with brutally. This included Jews, communists and those intellectuals who held values the Nazis deemed to be offensive. Heydrich is considered by some as the architect of the Holocaust, as Hermann Goering authorised Heydrich in January 1939 to develop plans for the final solution, or the solution to the Jewish question. Under the cover of military advancements, Heydrich created the Einsatzgruppen, a group of soldiers who would murder on a large scale civilians, or those deemed to be enemy of the Nazis, but they were killed following Wehrmacht advancements. Heydrich oversaw these, and these death squads shot and executed millions. Heydrich also invited different officials to attend the Von C conference, and he was the lead speaker, with support from Adolf Eichmann. This was where the final solution was decided upon, with Heydrich presenting the plans for the final solution. Inside of Bohemia and Moravia, Heydrich was also tasked with putting down the resistance and getting the Czech lands productive for the German war effort. His work overseeing the area saw dozens executed in public to deter the rest of the population from resisting or rising up against the Nazi occupiers. He also ordered the deportations of thousands to ghettos and then on to concentration camps. The pacification of the Czechs, Heydrich believed, was a great success, to the point where he regularly travelled round Prague in his open-top car, and he also disregarded personal security a number of times. But the plan to assassinate him had already been formulated, and two assassins were chosen for the job. Jan Kubik and Josef Gatschik had already been trained by the job by British SOE. On the 27th of March 1942, Heydrich was due to meet with Hitler in Berlin. It was believed that he was going to be transferred to France to deal with the French resistance, like he had the Czechs, but to get to the airport, he passed a junction where the assassins were based. As Heydrich's car approached a hairpin bend, Gabschik aimed his stem machine gun at Heydrich's car, which jammed, and then Kubitsch threw an anti-tank mine at Heydrich's car. It landed against the back wheel and exploded, with metal fragments wounding Heydrich. He suffered serious injuries and was hospitalised. He underwent surgery and it looked as if he was recovering. Himmler went to visit him, and Heydrich understood his fate, saying, The world is just a barrel organ, which the Lord God turns himself. We all have to dance to the tune, 
which was already on the drum. The day after Himmler visited, Heydrich fell into a coma and never regained consciousness, dying of sepsis on the 4th of June. Heydrich's death caused a huge degree of shock inside of Nazi Germany. He was regarded as an ideal Aryan, and his death was seen as a large dent in the Nazi regime. A huge funeral was held in Prague three days after his death, and then his coffin was placed aboard a train which set off for Berlin, where a huge Nazi ceremony would take place. This occurred on the 9th of June 1942, inside of the Reich Chancellery. It was attended by the major players inside of the Nazi party, and Himmler gave the eulogy to the man he regarded as a great friend. Hitler was also there, and he took part in the huge Nazi spectacle, and he placed Heydrich's medals including the highest grade of the German order, the wound badge in gold, the blood order medal, and the war merit cross first class with swords on the funeral pillow. His funeral was used for a huge propaganda effort in a display of Nazi power. Hitler, though, blamed Heydrich for his own death. As mentioned, Heydrich could have been considered careless with his approach. Hitler said, Since it is the opportunity which makes not only the thief, but also the assassin, such heroic gestures as driving in an open unarmed vehicle, or walking about the streets unguarded, are deemed just stupidity, which serves a fatherland not one whit. That a man as irreplaceable as Heydrich should expose himself to unnecessary danger, I can only condemn as stupid and idiotic. Heydrich's coffin after the ceremony was transported to the Invaliden Friedhof or the Invalid Cemetery. It is one of the oldest cemeteries in Berlin and was a traditional resting place for soldiers of the Prussian army. It has a rich history of military burials and a number of commanders are buried inside of the gates. The Red Baron's body was also buried inside the cemetery once it was transferred from France. During the Third Reich and the Nazi regime, a number of senior figures were buried inside there, and Heydrich was buried inside of the cemetery too. It was believed for decades that the exact spot of Heydrich's burial had been lost to time and history, and it was not public knowledge. Marking his grave was a temporary wooden marker, but when the Red Army stormed Berlin during the final days of the war in Europe, the wooden marker disappeared and went missing. It was in the shape of the Iron Cross, complete with a swastika, and Heydrich's name and his date of birth and death were written on it. It was never replaced, to ensure that Heydrich's grave did not become a meeting place for neo-Nazis to venerate Heydrich. As mentioned, it was believed that his grave had been lost to time, and a photograph of the burial shows that the wreaths were placed and the mourners were stood in section A of the cemetery. This placed a burial near to the north wall, and near the front. Hitler commissioned sculptures and architects to create a huge tomb, and an elaborate memorial, but as the Second World War turned against the Germans, this never occurred. The cemetery where his body was based became a no-man's land during the Cold War, and his grave along with other high-ranking Nazis was dismantled and left. It's believed though, that Heydrich's remains were never disinterred during the years. Following executions of high-ranking Nazis that took place at trials such as the Nuremberg Trials, the bodies were always cremated with the remains of people such as Hermann Goering, then being scattered in rivers. But Heydrich's grave and remains were left and untouched. But in December 2019, a disturbing news story hit the world's media. This supposed lost grave of Heydrich had been opened by grave robbers or by unknown individuals under the cover of darkness. An employee who worked at the cemetery discovered that the ground had been broken and that the grave had been prized open inside of the invalid cemetery. The Berlin police stated that the motive was unclear, but also that no bones had been removed from the grave, but they did confirm that it was Heydrich's grave that was broken into. This means that for decades people knew that it was there. Those who disturbed the grave must have had inside knowledge of the grave's location and who was buried inside, as markings identifying key Nazis were removed to prevent sympathisers turning them into Nazi shrines. It was said that the grave was dug up in the night between Wednesday and Thursday, but there were no immediate suspects as to who could have done it. It could have been opened by right-wing supporters who wished to search for the remains of him to sickenly venerate the hangman, or to turn his grave into a shrine. Graves of Nazis had been broken in before, as Horst Vessel, a Nazi paramilitary leader, had his grave broken into in 2000 by left-wing activists, who had a habit of defiling graves of other Nazis. 
vessel's skull was allegedly thrown in a river. The police, as mentioned, admitted that nothing was taken from Heydrich's grave and that they were looking for people in connection with the event. What's worrying, though, is the intent that someone may have had inside of the cemetery that evening. They could have disturbingly been searching for Heydrich's remains, and they obviously knew what they were looking for, disturbing that specific area of grass in the cemetery. What stopped them, though, taking the remains and digging further? Were they disturbed by noise in the cemetery that prevented them actually taking the remains of Reinhard Heydrich? What is worrying, though, is the fact that since 2019, very little information has been released with regards to Heydrich's alleged grave robber. There isn't much out there with regards to developments in the case. So what occurred is the police confirmed where Heydrich's grave was, exposing this to the world, with very little reward for the reveal, with the perpetrators assumingly still out there. The mystery as to who attempted to rob the grave of Reinhard Heydrich today still remains a mystery, but one that is incredibly disturbing. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.